Hare Krishna, very dear devotees, welcome back once again to our ever ongoing series on the glories of our most beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pastacha Deshatarne All glories to Sri Rupa so we are continuing with our uh, mini-series on stimulation for ecstatic love, and this will be part 10. For this lecture, we will focus on flowers. What role flowers play in Krishna's pastimes and how they can act as a stimulus uh, for awakening love for the divine couple, Shishi Vadasham Sundar. There's a very nice verse in, in Shastra, in the Shastra, Shubha Shitaratna Bhandagharam, about the, uh, the potency of both flowers and saints. It's as follows Asajana Sajana Sangi Sanghat Koroti Dusha Dhyam Apiha Sadhyam Pushpas Rachchakcham Bhushiro Durudha Pipi Lika Chambuti Chandra Bimbam. Very beautiful Sanskrit. Quote, By taking shelter of great souls, even a lowly person can achieve the impossible. Just as an ant in the shelter of a flower that has been offered on the head of Lord Shiva can actually perform the feat of touching the crescent moon. <laughs> so beautiful. There is also, um, there are also two of my uh, favorite statements by Sridhar Prabhupada about flowers. In a Srimad Bhagavatam lecture in, in uh, Bombay on January 19, uh, 1975, he said, flowers are the smile of Krishna. Flowers are the smile of Krishna. It's not a long statement, but it doesn't need to be. It's like a, a sutra. And there's that saying in Chaitanya Charitamrita, quoting Kaviraj Goswami, elegance is truth spoken concisely. Also, uh, once when describing to some uh, disciple pujaris how to do uh, deity worship, Prabhupada commented that, quote, flowers are the jewels of Kali Yuga. Flowers are the jewels of Kali Yuga. Now there's also um, a famous photo of Sridhar Prabhupada that appeared uh, on an early BBT publication of Krishna book on the back of one of the two, uh, it was divided into two parts, two books. Uh, this was in the old days, I think in the 70s or 80s, we used to distribute these big Krishna books. And it showed Prabhupada holding a golden colored champak flower. And as the photographer took the photo, Sridhar Prabhupada said that Lord Chaitanya's trans transcendental body was the same color as that flower, golden. This is surely, uh, I could just say, seeing with the eyes of devotion. Now, even our beloved Krishna himself affectionately refers to flowers in his immortal Bhagavad Gita, um, chapter 9, um, verse 26, where he says, Patram pushpam phalam toyam ye yome bhaktya prayachati. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit, or water, I will accept it. <laughs> and such, um, how could you say, offered flowers take on great importance for devotees as a means of stimulation for ecstatic love. <clears throat> how so? Well, Sridhar Prabhupada writes in uh, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya, chapter 12. It's a little long, but it's very uh, significant here. As far as Maharaj Ambarish is concerned, he actually performed all the items of devotional service. He first of all engaged his mind upon the lotus feet of Krishna. He engaged his words and his power of speaking in describing the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He engaged his hands in washing the temple of the deity, his ears in hearing the words of Krishna, and his eyes in beholding the deity. He engaged his sense of touch by rendering service to the devotees, and he engaged his sense of smell 
by relishing the fragrance of flowers offered to Krishna. By relishing the fragrance of flowers offered to Krishna. He engaged his tongue in tasting the tulsi leaves offered to the lotus feet of Krishna, his legs in going to the temple of Krishna, and his head in offering obeisances to the deity of Krishna. <laughs> and a similar, I found a, a similar instruction is given in Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, Madhya Leela, chapter 22, verse 122. Parikrama stavapata japa senkirtana dupa malya ganda mahapashada bhojana. Bengali. It states, one should uh, circumambulate, circumambulate a temple, recite various prayers, chant softly, chant congregationally, smell the incense and flower garlands offered to the deity, and eat the remnants of food offered to the deity. And wearing, you know, just wearing garlands of flowers that have been offered to Krishna is actually one of the 64 limbs of devotional service. Described by um, Sri Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, where he actually quotes Srimad Bhagavatam 11, 646, where Sri Uddhava, it's described there, Sri Uddhava says, Tvayo prabhukta sagandha vaso lankara charchita uchtishta bhojino dhashash tavamayam jayemahi. It's very beautiful. Quote, simply by decorating ourselves with the garlands, fragrant oils, clothes, and ornaments that you have already enjoyed, Krishna, and by eating the remnants of your meals, we, your servants, will indeed conquer your illusory energy. Now, Sri Rupa Goswami also quotes another verse from Skanda Purana in support of uh, wearing uh, flower garlands offered to the Lord. He writes, Krishnotrinam nu niramhalya yashtan gam sprishate mune sarva rogash tata parpar Mukto Bhavati Narada. Quote, O Narada, whenever the Nirmalia, uh, remnants like garlands, etc., taken from Krishna's deity, touch the body of an individual, they become free from all diseases and sins. <laughs> they become free from all diseases and sins. Just see how powerful are they. Uh, purifying are the flower garlands off to the Lord. That's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1 to uh, 126. So in these ways, and so many more, we can understand the importance of something so simple as flowers, flowers that help to awaken our love for Radhisham. And the glory of Sri Vrindavan Dham, where I'm very, I'm very fortunate to be sitting here now in Vrindavan, the glory of Vrindavan is that there are unlimited kinds of flowers to offer to Krishna and to be used in his service. For example, a sample of different flowers are, that are here in Vrindavan. There's Malika flowers, there's Lavanga flowers, there are Jati flowers, uh, Utika flowers, Kadamba flowers, Champak flowers, Stala Aravinda flowers. <laughs> yes, Stala Aravinda flowers. Uh, Shirisha flowers, uh, Kunda flowers, Ketaki, there's Ketaki flowers, there's Kushumbha flowers, and Kimshuka flowers. This I was reading. I haven't seen all of them or appreciated the aroma once offered to Krishna, but that is a list the Acharyas give. But for today, I thought we would just focus on one of those flowers. I mean, it seems we can give lots of <laughs> classes on flowers. <laughs> uh, We'll just focus on the famous Kadamba flower, Kadamba. Now I did some research. Uh, according to the book Rajani Gantu, Rajani Gantu, it's an ancient um, Ayurvedic encyclopedia. Encyclopedia. It was written by a very famous uh, Kashmiri royal physician hundreds of years ago. He describes therein that there are uh, 27 trees on the planet Earth, which are known as 
uh, Deva Vriksha, Deva Vriksha trees, meaning literally trees on which demigods eternally reside. Just put that in your mind's eye. These 27 trees, this is where demigods reside on the earth planet. And one of these 27 trees is the Kadamba tree, which produces Kadamba flowers. Now the specialty of Shiva and Dham is that all these 20, 27 types of trees used to be found in Braj in the, in the olden days. They're scattered around the world, but all 27 of these trees used to be found in Braj in the olden days. Therefore, it's described when Krishna came to Braj 5,000 years ago, it was already a reservoir of all auspiciousness. It's as if the demigods were just waiting for Krishna to come to receive him and participate in his Braj Leela. Now, there's a famous story uh, that's been passed down from one generation to another here in Vrindavan. It's a nice little story. And that is that several centuries ago, when the Mughals, unfortunately, attacked Vrindavan, as you know, most of the deities were moved to other states in India, in particular Rajasthan. Now, after this happened, after all the deities had been moved, um, the story goes that a little boy asked his grandfather, O oh, elderly father, Please tell me, whom shall we worship now? Whom shall we worship now? So the grandfather, he smiled at the boy and said, Son, Krishna eternally resides in the Tamal tree, and Shirada in the Kandamba tree. Therefore, don't worry, we will simply worship these transcendental trees. Wow. Therefore, don't worry, we shall simply worship these transcendental trees. And in Vrindavan to this very day, the Tamal and Kadamba trees are still worshipped. I can verify that, having traveled all over Brajbhumi. <laughs> now, uh, in many places in Shastra, we find that whenever Krishna feels separation from Shirada, he embraces a Kadamba tree. And whenever Shirada feels separation from Krishna, she embraces a Tamal tree because the tamal tree has a dark complexion, like Krishna, and the kadamba tree has a golden complexion, like Sri Radhika. Very beautiful. Now, before diving into the nectarian ocean of, how can I say, kadamba pastimes, <laughs> let's hear a little bit more about kadamba trees so that we can appreciate and uh, relish these pastimes even more. These lectures are meant to be relished, unlike worldly news or worldly activities. In chapter 27 of the Charaka Shamhita, Charaka Shamhita, which is what? An ancient scripture describing uh, surgical operations in Vedic times. Wow. They had surgical operations in Vedic times. Charaka Shamhita. Therein we learn that uh, the Kadamba trees, stems, flowers, and leaves increase one's life, increase one's knowledge, fertility, and they increase the effulgence of one's face. <laughs> Here in Vrindavan, I see that, you know, sabjis and pickles are still made from kadamba leaves and, and flowers. And I was reading there's actually two different types of kadamba trees. One kadamba tree blossoms with uh, very small flowers, and it's, it's quite short. And the other grows in Bengal and blossoms with very big flowers. These Bengali trees are, are much taller. Um, now, in Brajbasa language, it's commonly said, kadamba shiradha, kadamba shirada, which means Radha's complexion is like a kadamba flower. And in Bengali, it said Kadamba Jini Gaur, meaning that Guranga's complexion is like that of Kadamba flowers. <laughs> now again, in Rajani Gandhu, that Ayurvedic encyclopedia we mentioned, <clears throat> in verse 997, how did I get it? Vrindavan Research Institute, a gold mine for ISKCON now. 
There it said that the Kadamba tree has seven different names. Lots of details, but, you know, love is in the details. So what are the different names of the Kadamba tree? Vritta Pushpa, Shurabi, Lala Napriya, Kadambharaya, Sindhu Pushpa, Madhadya, and Karna Puraka. Now the same book also lists uh, three <laughs> sub-varieties, here we go, of Kadamba trees. Dara Kadamba, Duli Kadamba, and um, uh, Bhumi Kadamba. And all these varieties and sub-varieties still exist today in Vindavan's forest. Even the Bengali Kadamba tree also grows in, in different parts of, of Braj. Now also in the Vrindavan Research Institute, we found um, a friend of the poet Surdas, who we often uh, quote, the great Surdas, whose samadhi is there at uh, Chanda Surovara. Uh, a friend of his, whose name was Govinda Das, wrote famously, it's very famous here in Braj, Kadamba Chada Kanha Bhula Vat Gaya, that's uh, Braj Bas, meaning, <coughs> Young Sri Krishna climbs up a kadamba tree and calls out to his cows. Hearing the enchanting sound of his flute, they come running from wherever they are. He also calls to all his friends who gather the cows together. The poet Govinda Dasa's lord <laughs> calls his uh, brother Balaram, Krishna is calling his brother Balaram, and says, let's go home now, Balaram. He also sings very beautifully, Kadamba mai di kat chahu dishi. Meaning, Oh Mother, look, everywhere are blossoming kadamba trees. Thus, garlands are made out of kadamba flowers. Ankle bells and bracelets are made of kadamba flowers. And the kunja bhavana grove is made, for kadamba, is made from kadamba leaves and stems. I love that kunja bhavana grove. The poet Govinda Das says, my dear mother, look at the opulence of, of the Kadamba trees existing in Vrindavan solely for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. <laughs> now, um, in Vrindavan, there's actually an entire forest of Kadamba trees, an entire forest. It's called Kadambavan. This forest is actually situated on the far side of Govardhan Hill uh, and it extends from the southern tip of Govardhan all the way up to Uruvukund. My, my dear godbrother Govinda Maharaj, he once pointed out to me, just at that southern tip of um, Govardhan Hill, just around the corner, there used to be a big forest of Kadamba trees. He mentioned this to me many years ago. And now it makes sense. Of course, many have been cut down for agricultural purposes. I don't know why. It's, such, it's so un unfortunate. But he did say that when he first came to Vrindavan, there was a forest of Kadamba trees. And that's confirmed. That's Kadamba Vaan. And it's, it goes all the way up to Uruvukund, which is close to Radhakund. Now, when our dear Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Vrindavan, um, in search of Krishna, you could say, it's described that upon seeing the forest creatures, in Kadambavan, because you know he did uh, Govardhan Parakama. So when he came to to Kadambavan, they're circling around the southern point there, and he he um, saw the forest creatures, he would faint in ecstasy because they're all Braj Basis, no part of Krishna's pastimes. So at that moment, when he would faint, the deer would come forward and lick the foam from his mouth. Well, birds drank the tears that fell from his eyes. How fortunate. And upon regaining consciousness, it's described, he would continue to wander through Kadambavan on his Parikama. And at one point I was reading, he came upon a Kadamba tree whose flowers were in full bloom and which reminded him, of course, of Sri Radha, same color. And as a result, he cried in ecstasy, causing the trees to flood the ground beneath them with their own tears. 
Wow, Sri Vrindavan Dham Ki. It's all about love. Witnessing all this, the, um, how's it said? The nearby deer fainted. And it's said that while searching for Krishna, um, either in a cave or in Govardhan Hill, or on Govardhan Hill, nearby Govardhan Hill, or in the forest, and not finding him, Lord Chaitanya would roar with grief. He would roar with grief. A roar that is a roar that's described stopped peacocks from dancing and caused them to cry in fear. <laughs> and because of these um, uh, ecstatic ecstasies of separation felt by Mahaprabhu, in which his heart repeatedly broke and his body appeared uh, to sustain injuries, his companions became fearful for him. So after Lord Chaitanya completed his Govardhan Parakama, the Brajabhasis, out of love for him, concern for him, they actually requested him to leave Braj and go back to Jagannath Puri from where he had come. His ecstasies were so great. As they were also in Gambira Temple in Puri. But, you know, the Brajabhasis became worried because as Mahaprabhu was going around Vrindavan, these ecstasies sometimes caused him to fall to the ground, etc. So they actually said, Mahaprabhu, please go back to Puri. This is nectar. Now, as far as the divine couple, Shishi, Radham, Sundar, are concerned, the ecstasies that they felt in Vrindavan's forest were no less than those experienced by Lord Chaitanya, of course. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radhe Krishna Nahayanga, Kaviraj confirms that um, the combined forms of Radha and Krishna appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he felt ecstasy. So the ecstasies they felt 5,000 years ago in their pastimes in Vrindavan were no less than those experienced by Mahaprabhu. I found a quote by one Acharya. It's so nice. He writes that uh, a single moment in the Kadambavan forest inspired within them, the divine couple, far greater happiness than the vast nectar ocean formed when all other spiritual ecstasies were pooled together. <laughs> it said uh, that Kadambavan, being blessed by every wonderful fragrance, sweetness and charm, attracts the heart of even the goddess of fortune. And in that transcendental forest, flowers blossom year-round. And Shastra says that, uh, how's it said, Kadambavan forever echoes with the voices of birds, like uh, male and female parents, parrots, who recount the confidential pastimes of Radha and Krishna, as well as cuckoos, with their soft enchanting, coo, coo. It's actually written, coo, -hoo, coo, -hoo. K -U -H -U. The, the, the cuckoos, coo, -hoo, coo. <laughs> Now, for a leela, for a pastime, we've had some tattva there about, you know, uh, kadamba trees and kadamba flowers. One leela. One time uh, in the kadamba forest, kadamba van, uh, Krishna was late for a rendezvous with Srimati Radharani. And as time went on, Srimati became very anxious. And her anxiety, it's described, turned into distress. And in her distress, she became uh, so emaciated that her gold and coral bracelets, I thought that was very beautiful, her gold and coral bracelets slid off her wrists, slid right off her wrists, and fell to the ground one by one. It's described like that, one by one. When you read these things, or you repeat these things, you want to make sure that every detail is, is given. It just adds to the... Um, Appreciation of Brajalila. So her friends, her gopis, the Braja gopis, I like to say Braja gopis, the cowherd girls, the milkmaids, the milkmaids of Vrindavan, they tried to comfort her. But they knew that only the sight of Krishna could truly console her. So one um, 
intelligent gopi was sent to find Krishna and, and with the order to bring him back very quickly. However, when it became dark, she was unable to follow Krishna's footprints. So what? So she followed the compass of her heart. The needle of that compass was her love for Krishna and its true north always pointed in whatever direction he was. So it's poet, such poetry our acharyas give us. Finally, that gopi found Krishna. Where? In a grove of kadamba trees with blossoming flowers, kadamba flowers, where she saw many peacocks dancing all alone with Krishna. So this milkmaid of Radha, she said to Krishna, O Madhava, my dear but unhappy friend Radharani eagerly waits for you at Shrabikund. Shrabikund. She, risked, uh, she risked everything to escape from her in-laws and braved the dangers of a dark, it's described, snake-infested forest. Just to be with you. How could you insult her by loitering here in your father's kingdom? Unable to find you, she constantly embraces you within her heart. Thus she wanders about in agitation. One moment she gets up to leave, and the next moment she sits back down. She is so distracted that she does not care even to arrange her disheveled hair and clothes. Instead, she calls out in a piteous voice and showers the undergrowth with tears as she rolls on the ground. Sometimes Shirada runs back and forth. Sometimes she falls down unconscious. And at other times she rips her sari in frustration, breaks her flower bracelets, and scatters the pearls of her necklace. At one moment she talks to a tree, and the next moment she stumbles towards the Jamuna River. With her eyes filled with tears, she requested me as follows. O oh friend, please find my Krishna, and when you do, tell him with words filled with devotion that I place all my love at his lotus feet. Tell him, you tell him, Krishna, how could you possibly neglect someone who considers her own life insignificant when compared to fulfilling your every desire and reciprocating with your youthful love? Hare Krishna. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? From the heart of Sri Radha. Vrindavaneshwari Shimati Radharani Ki. So the Acharyas say that um, as nearby forest creatures heard these um, piteous cries and uh, loving appeals, they were filled with the pain of separation and sympathy for Radharani's suffering. The forest animals, of course, remember that everything in Vrindavan is personal, everything is a fully realized soul, everyone is a devotee of Krishna, a pure devotee of Krishna in a variety of ways. So when these enlightened forest animals heard these words, they were filled with what? I just love this. The pain of separation and sympathy. The pain of separation and sympathy for Radhika's suffering. And in that condition, the deer and birds wailed. The trees and creepers uh, shriveled up. The bees stopped humming. The fish Stop swimming. The flowers wilted. Stones softened. And water solidified. So, realizing Rajan's pangs of separation, as the, this, gopi, this, this gopi described to him, quickly, uh, Krishna quickly stood up and followed that gopi to the rendezvous site for that day. <laughs> and upon his arrival, Radharani's ecstasies immediately changed from separation to meeting, from Vipralambhav to Sambhog, from separation to meeting. And Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, he summarizes so nicely, 
Such are the ever-fresh pastimes of Radha and Krishna within the groves of Kadambhavan. And Srila Rupa Goswami gives a further hint of such pastimes in his Gandharva Sampartana Ashtakam. Uh, in, in an appeal to divine couple, he says in verse 5, speaking of himself, When will this person serve your lotus feet that adorn the three worlds by massaging them as you were sitting together on a cushion made of flowers in a grove while making sweet jokes with each other? Hare Krishna. <laughs> wow. So let us uh, finish today with two prayers by one of our great heroes, Srila Prabhupada Saraswati, who describes so nicely the pastime, so nicely the, the, um, the leelas of Radha and Krishna and the leelas of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in his uh, Vrindavan Mahimamrita, he says very nicely, relevant to today's class, first of all he says, I bow down before the great trees of Vrindavan, which are filled with leaves and sprouts, maddened bees, maddened bees, the tumult of many birds, nectar of uh, streams of nectar honey, and branches bowed down with many splendid, wonderful fruits and flowers. I pray, number two, I pray to become a tree in Sri Vrindavan Dham and please Shishi Radhika Krishna with my limitless, splendid, sweet fruits, my unlimitedly splendid, fragrant flowers filled with splendid pollen and splendid honey, uh, my splendid host of birds as well, and my splendid twigs and buds. Oh, let me become a flowering tree and Sri Vrindavan Dham. Thank you so much, Srila Prabhupada Saraswati. And a final, uh, I hope, a humble prayer by me. It's actually a traditional quote I've come across, used by uh, Vaishnavas upon completing their lecture series, or their lectures. Yet atra shkalitam kinchit Vidvamsa pura yantutat. Yad atra shoshtva tovam kinchit tad gurur eva me nahi. If there were any errors in my presentation, may the learned souls correct me. However, if there was anything nice in it, my talk, then it belongs to my guru and not to me. Srila Prabhupada he. May you be glorified, Sri Prabhupada, throughout the three worlds. Thank you, Prabhu. Well, <laughs> we have lots more uh, nectar on um, flowers. I think even we can continue with some Kadamba flowers, but we have more nectar from uh, our Goswamis and various poets and our beloved Sri Prabhupada about flowers. So give me some time one week and we'll, we'll be back again. Thank you so much. All glories to Shudra Baba. Shishi Gorani Tai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Radha Shama Shundar Ki, Vrindavaneshwari, Shimati Radharani Ki, Shimaya Purdam Ki, Shishi Gorani Tai Ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtanya Ki, Ki Tai Gopi Mandi, Jay Jay Sisi Radhe Shyam. Hare Krishna, glories to Prabhupada.